a short video by Richard Wolf in which which is titled Wolf Responds to Ukraine Sanctions and Rising Inflation. Let's see what Richard Wolf has to say. This is Richard Wolf wanting to respond about this Ukraine crisis. Many of you have asked and I want to talk to you about particularly the economic dimensions of it. Of course, we are all worried. Wars in Europe have been devastating. Over the last century, 40, 50 million people dead, untold numbers hurt, economies destroyed, histories upended, extraordinary. And so, of course, we're all worried, and we should be. Accidents can happen. Nuclear powers are involved. Political considerations mm. are making leaders desperate. All of it, a heady stew, very dangerous. But I also want to take a hard look at what is actually going on. Mm. And to do that, I need to make some comparisons. Let me start with the following. Over the last 20, 25 years, the United States has claiming national security concerns, worried about its security. The United States has invaded two countries many, many, many thousands of miles away, Afghanistan and Iraq. I will and those were terrible, by the way. Those invasions were terrible, just like the invasion that Russia is currently doing in Ukraine. I won't mention other incursions elsewhere. But those were done on urgent national security grounds, or so our leaders told us. Invasions of countries with whom we were not at war, invasions of countries that pose no credible threat to the United States, countries that weren't in any official way clearly connected hmm. to anything that happened in the United States on 9-11. Most of the people involved there came from an allied country, the Saudi Arabian country. Okay. Russia now claims its national security is threatened by the expansion of NATO an alliance that has always been directed against Russia. Obviously. They are threatened you know that. by a country they border on, the Ukraine. And they've taken... They are threatened by Ukraine. Here we go. Here we go. Taken steps, including recognizing two former... Yeah, I can rewind. Here we go. Claims its national security is threatened by the expansion of NATO, an alliance that has always been directed against Russia. Obviously, yep. They are threatened by a country they border on, the Ukraine. And they've taken steps, including recognizing two former provinces of the Ukraine as needed by their national security. Russian national security, American national security. Illegal international intervention by both. Far away in one case, right up close by another. What implications you want to draw from this, I leave to you. But forgetting it, is not a reasonable way to approach this situation. Second consideration. Going back to the 1990s, and one could go further, but just starting with the 1990s, the United States has slapped sanctions against the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, and a whole host of others. None of that has anything to do with the invasion into Ukraine. Countries, companies, and so on. There were stated purposes in those sanctions, 
as there are today. Did those sanctions work? Basically, the evidence suggests not at all. In 2014, when Russia took the Crimean Peninsula and there were tremendous sanctions against them, did they work? Did the Crimean Peninsula revert back to the condition before Mr. Putin and the Russians went in? No. Okay. Did the Iranians fundamentally change their government, their society, their religion, their attitude towards a whole host of issues, including Israel, as a result of the sanctions there? Not much evidence of that at all. Mr. Trump's sanctions against Huawei Corporation or China with his tariffs and his trade wars, did that change China's basic policy? Did it hurt China the way Mr. Trump boasted over and over again? There's no shred of evidence to that effect. Chinese economy last year did better than ever in its growth, in its exports. Remarkable. Remarkable. Did they stop doing what they've done in the past? No. Did they change their attitude towards Hong Kong? No. Did they change their attitude toward what Taiwan? No. The problem is sanctions never worked well. And over the last 30 years, the victims of sanctions have become experts more than they were ever before in getting around them, climbing underneath or over them, pretending, and all the rest. So sanctions aren't going to do much. Mr. Putin must have known, given the history, that sanctions would be applied, even before the West had told him that it would do that. And he did it anyway. Clearly, they are not the deterrent. It may be a good couple of days on television looking and sounding tough but it doesn't do the job. But now let me turn to what the effects of all this are going to be. Above all, this regime of sanctions. Okay, so we are six and a half minutes in, and I know I'm not one to talk, given that I do, you know, pretty long preambles. I'm a live streamer, to be fair. But I don't know what the take is here. Right now... The opinion is both sides have done bad things. And I'm very worried about what the conclusion is going to be here. But let's find out. Russia is one of the most important producers and exporters of oil and gas in the world. The price of oil and gas has been shooting up in the anticipation of problems at the Ukraine. And now they're shooting up even more. You know what that will do? That will worsen and lengthen the inflation already shaking the U.S. capitalist system to its foundations. An inflation doubly destructive because it comes after the last two years when we had simultaneously an economic crash of immense proportions and the worst public health disaster in American history at the same time. On inflation now is, as people are feeling it, an unbelievable extra burden, and it's going to be worsened by this program of sanctions. And I say that even though we don't yet know, as I'm doing this, what the response will be. Let me remind everyone, in response to the sanctions in the past, The Russians, the Chinese, and so on, have levied their own sanctions, and those will have an effect. And the Russians are getting good, as the Chinese are, in figuring out how to make those hurt. We're going to have quite a situation in this country. The American people are going to have to ask themselves, is it worth it? Do we really want another blow to our standard of living? 
another hurdle we don't have the resources to overcome in those rising prices? Is that worth it to argue over two provinces? Oh, my God. Dude. This was five hours ago. This was five hours ago. Of a country called the Ukraine that most Americans would have trouble finding on the map if. Dude, are you crazy? Asked to do so. <sighs> well, I don't want to belabor the point. Don't but worry, you already have fucking Uncle Snoozy. Yes, is. That's not going to be a popular political or economic stance. Not at all. Let me close by telling you what, in my judgment, will be the biggest inflationary impact of all of this. The whole world is full of businessmen and women, employers, who have been chomping at the bit, wanting to raise their prices. The reasons are obvious. They want more profits, which is the major reason prices are raised most of the time. Indeed, this if you study bad, business, guys. you'll know that the name bad. of the game in business is to make a profit, and the bigger your profit, the better off you are, and the better businessman or woman you've shown the world you can be. So, yeah, of course, they raise prices to make more money. But, of course, that runs a risk. Your customer won't be happy to be required to pay more. And if the thought is he's only paying more, your customer, so you can make more profits, especially if you've just had a year or two of decent profits, that's not good. You know what you need? You need to be able to raise your prices and have an excuse so it doesn't look like you're doing it to make more profits. That's why f folks who raise prices, and you know it's only employers that do that, Nobody else raises prices. That tiny minority, 1% of our people, if that, raises the price that the rest of us pay. They always need to blame somebody else. Blame the workers. Blame the government. Blame the taxes. Blame, blame. Yes, he is arguing that this is a capitalist conspiracy theory to justify raising prices because the Russian sanctions are going to um are going to Im cause inflation blame 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 but it's often as thin as i just made it look like but this trouble in ukraine oh wonderful what a godsend that is every businessman or woman around the world jacking up their prices can now point to the turmoil in the war and the fear of war and the turmoil of the sanctions and all of that, point to that and excuse the jacking up of prices. That's why the inflation is going to be the first global casualty of the events in the... How about the people of Ukraine, you old fart? How about the people of Ukraine? That's the first global casualty, you fucking idiot. You desiccated, rolled out, fucking weekend at Bernie's piece of shit. Holy fuck. Ukraine. I will, of course, have more to say as the specifics of this particular... Save it, dude. Fucking can it. We don't give a shit. Okay, guys, I gotta be real with you for just a second. I'm gonna be completely... And fucking utterly, utterly real with you. The next generation of leftists is so superior to the former generation of leftists, you can't even imagine. The current generation of leftists, the rising generation of, 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 uh, of, of leftists is a thousand times. First of all, we have way more swag. Second of all, we aren't fucking married to a country that no longer exists. By the way, you want to see something? I'm going to give you a little spoiler. I already knew that Russia, that, that I already knew that Richard Wolf's take was going to be really bad. And here's why. Are you ready? Are you fucking ready? 
Richard Wolf is always on RT. Guys, he's on RT all the fucking time. He's been on going on RT for literal years, guys. I know most people don't know this. But the uh again, the the fucking uh the, the fucking state of affairs. RT is Russia today. It is the Russian State Media Corporation. He's not right. Wait, how can you think that he's right? Ooh, wait a second. Should we see how he wanted to talk about it? Wait, let's see what he had to say about it four weeks ago. Ooh, this will be interesting. Let's see what 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 Richard Wolf had to say four weeks ago about this. I bet this it was Richard fucking Wolf trashy. Democracy at work. With another wolf responds, and I'm responding this time to many of you who have asked me to comment on the I got to speed him up though. Crisis in relationships uh, between Russia on the one hand and the United States and Western Europe on the other. And I'm glad to do so. I will not uh, repeat what you can find in the mass media who are whipping up pretty much of a hysteria around this issue. Uh, but I will try to shed light that you might not have other. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I told you. Why seen uh, focused on this uh, event. So in no particular order, but in order to at least bring some level of reasonable sanity uh, to this discussion, uh, which is not easy when you have this level of uh, drumbeats of war uh, all around you, but I'll try. First, anyone who knows about history will understand that many, many wars or near wars are occasioned by the domestic political concerns of those who go to war. That's not new. That's not specific to the U.S., but it doesn't exclude the U.S. either. So let me begin by an observation which can be found in many, many places around the world, although it's kind of scarce here for reasons that will become obvious. Mr. Biden and the Democratic Party have suffered a series of stunning defeats. And those defeats are making Mr. Biden and the Democratic Party look weak and ineffectual and for good reason. Let yeah, yeah. So what, what this is going to be, by the way, I'm going to explain it right now. Ready? This is going to be Richard Wolf is going to say that Joe Biden provoked Russia into doing a unilateral invasion of their neighbor because he wanted to boost his ratings. I'm trying to control myself here. I'm really trying to control myself here. We go just through some of them. Build Back Better has been reduced to a vague shadow of what it once was. The commitment to protect voting rights of people who are being pushed out of their voting rights by the Republican Party, the ability of Mr. Biden and the Democrats to win that one is also gone by the boards. The numbers of people dying of COVID in the United States as I speak make it look that Mr. Biden's promise to fix that problem relative to the failures of Trump, that's not working out real well either. And we all know that after two years of suffering economic collapse nearly and COVID disaster, the economic program of the Biden administration seems to be to preside over an inflation with nothing more powerful than a promise that it won't last all that long as if they can predict the future and it won't be that bad as if they can predict the future. So Mr. Biden and the Democrats need to distract all of us from the failures of the Democratic Party domestically. And many times in U.S. history, as in that of other countries, nothing works to distract. Lau Laween, ex extremely good point. Didn't he just make the argument that people in America don't care about the Ukraine? To be fair, um... To be fair, that was in the, this is an older video, so he hadn't made that argument yet. Now, you know, see, he'll reverse his position. It's both the, the, that no one cares about Ukraine and that it will raise the, that it will raise Biden's uh, 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 approval rating. Interesting. Isn't that, isn't that wild? By the way, I just called this. I know. I, I, shut up. Shut up. I know. It's a minor misspeak. I'm listening to a guy say the Ukraine a hundred times. I made a minor misspeak. Shut the fuck up. Distract attention so much as a nice, scary, foreign kerfuffle. I love you. I'm sorry. That's what the Ukraine in large part, not all, but in large part is about. You can watch, by the way, the same game being played by that pathetic Boris. Called it. Called it. Johnson in England who is now down to virtually no support at all, having been caught organizing alcohol parties at the same time that he told the rest of the British people they couldn't gather in groups more than three because of the danger of COVID. Having been caught, having been exposed as a liar repeatedly. Hey, Vermin! Members of Yay, Vermin! Vermin, you have come at a great time. You are getting to witness the old, the old guard of the online left collectively shit their pants and for everyone to see.
literally just an old man loading his pants full of rotten diarrhea in front of the entire world. Amazing. Just amazing. And this man is considered to be like one of the greats. His own party, ask him, urge him to go. He needs to send weapons to the Ukraine and make as much noise as he can in the desperate effort to deflect attention from his domestic catastrophes. So that's one part of the story, but it's not all. The United States and you know you're not the current generation we Zoomers are. You you think you are. Hey nuts! When you fuckers actually start making some content, then you'll be the current generation. Right now, us jaded, busted ass millennials, we're the ones making the content. We're the ones actually doing shit. So once you all catch up with it, you fucking go ahead. But you guys, I'm trying to set things up for you guys to be able to do anything. But I don't know. Y'all are fucking too busy. I don't know fucking down stealing your parents credit cards to buy fucking Fortnite skins or some stupid shit so you could twerk with Thanos for a meme that you post that gets three fucking likes yes I'm a millennial Europe don't agree on how to deal with this and that should be understood because it will be definitive here the United States wants what a war with Russia guess where the war will take place in Europe the United States and Russia even get together to discuss and negotiate when the place where the damage will be done is in Europe. So the Europeans, guess what? They're not so eager for a war because they don't care to... America wasn't eager for a war. America has literally discouraged a war at every fucking turn. No one wants the war except Russia. I don't know where this idea that everyone wants a war came from. No one wanted a war. No one all that that means for the country of Ukraine, with whom they have neither financial nor any other great shared interests. So the United States is going to have a problem with the Europeans. It already does. In the rush for hysteria, the pretense of a coalition with Europe is maintained in the American press. It has all the substance of those coalitions in Afghanistan and Iraq that were thin disguises. No, it does not. No, it fucking doesn't. Oh my God, this guy's just senile. This is just senility. For something the United States wanted and the others went along with 10% real, 90% fakery. Then there are the people we are, quote, as a nation, the U.S., allied with in the Ukraine. An ugly bunch of people that includes significant Nazi and fascist movements. The United States is... Literally repeating Russian propaganda. You want to know what other country has fucking crazy Nazis in it? You want to know? Oh, oh, is it fucking, is it fucking Russia? Is, is not Russia literally currently under the leadership of a fascist president for life? Are you fucking stupid? And the answer is, of course, yes. So eager to have this Yeah, can we replay that? Of course. The nation the U.S. allied with in the Ukraine. An ugly bunch of people that includes significant Nazi and fascist movements. The United States is so eager to have this game run its designed choreograph. Uh, direction that it doesn't want us to talk about that let alone to demand that those we support not have that kind of history or those kinds of commitments and finally here's the basic question is whatever happens in the ukraine worth a war really in the nuclear age now with all the problems the united states ask putin he's the invader you fucking clown you stooge fucking literal literal paid agent has I don't think so, and I don't think the American people, any more than the Europeans, will go for that. So if you do it, you can expect your support for it after an initial euphoria in the nature of a... Pepper. By the way, when I say literal paid agent, I mean that. As in, as in Richard Wolf has been collecting fucking payments from RT. As in, he's had his pieces published by RT. And he's repeating, right now, Russian state propaganda. A literal... State propaganda agent. ...to disappear on you faster than it disappeared in Afghanistan, which is why we're not there anymore, in Iraq, which is why we're really not there anymore, and in Vietnam, which kicked us out. So we have... Oh, perfect balance! That means they both cancel out! 50-50! Literally! That means I win. That means I am no longer a boomer. You all are the boomers. The fact that it, it, it cancels itself out by the rules of democracy to face that reality, uh, otherwise it's going to, to undo us. So make no mistake, wars can happen out of these calculations and miscalculations, but the origin of all of this. And you wanna know who calculated a war starting? Putin, Putin invaded, Putin started a war. 
Putin did not provoke a war. Putin started a war. Has much more to do with domestic politics and, since I'm an economist, domestic economics than anything else. And here's the domestic economics. And if you want to understand it better, watch Texas Senator Cruz. The United States needs buyers for its energy output. Europe is one of the most important. Russia has incredible uh, short stocks of oil and gas, and it is shipping those to Europe. Europe has to make a decision between Russian and U.S., and much of this is about trying to use this struggle to squeeze the Russians out of the European energy market and the Americans in. Europeans don't want it because the Russian gas and oil are cheaper. And that is the reality behind the hysteria, and I hope that these considerations will add something as each of you... By the way, we, we now have the benefit of saying none of this was hysteria. As he said hysteria 15 times, it was not hysteria. Everyone who was worried about this was correct. Not only that, but the information that people presented saying why they were concerned about this, we were correct. Those of us who were ringing the alarm bells on this, we were correct. Think about and deal with the risks we all face as this plays itself out. If videos like this and additions to the national conversation of this sort seem to you to be valuable, that's why we make them in the hopes that they do. And if they do, partner with us, please. Share this video with friends, relatives, co-workers, uh, your family, and so on. That's why we don't. Do don't fucking share this old farts videos. There are better videos. First of all, I am more entertaining than Richard Wolf, And second of all, I am clearly smarter than Richard Wolf, Which I didn't think that was the case. I always thought re relatively highly of Richard Wolf until like, I guess in the last year, I've come to be rather disappointed with some of the the arguments that he's made. Yeah, I'm done. I I'm done with this motherfucker. Wow, that's really unfortunate, guys. That's pathetic. That is fucking pathetic. Like, like, do you, you guys see that, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not like, uh, I'm not going crazy here. You guys all see that, right? We just watched his four-week-old video of him repeatedly saying hysteria, 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 and then repeating the exact talking points that Putin put forward in his videos, and then now doing it again, downplaying everything.